Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is the uh, situation in the telecommunication market in the United States. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty straight uh, to the point uh, situation where um, we have um, different problems. Um, uh, competition is not as strong as it should be. It should be. Uh, the network is over over saturated, and um, um, there's not enough choices for the American public. So here, there's a new website that the FCC has created, and uh, this website uh, talks exactly about the problem that there is in the United States. As you can see here, it says, it's called, first of all, Wireless for America. It's called, tell the FCC that the wireless industry needs more competition and more coverage. The FCC is asking for your comments by December 17 on a proposal made by Light Squared to create a new nationwide mobile broadband network that will benefit everyone concerned about mobile data prices, reliability, and coverage. This is your chance to tell the FCC how you feel about the state of the wireless industry. Are you paying too much for your mobile data? Are your calls dropping? Uh, Light Square proposal to share spectrum with the, with, with the government is an in innovative idea in the public interest to increase the efficiency with which our nation uses scarce spectrum. The FCC should allow this fresh approach to unleash growth and advancements through the country. Here you can click here to file a comment with the FCC. So, now there's also a video here yeah, that we're going to play. Today, our nation's wireless infrastructure is at a critical crossroads as weak signals, dead zones, and oversubscribed networks were stalling American innovation. Once a global innovator, America now ranks 15th in broadband penetration. Wireless capacity is running out. Within 24 months, our smartphones, tablets, and other technology that we rely upon every day will be in jeopardy. Our existing wireless network simply cannot support this rising demand. The only way to fix this problem is to build a new wireless network and build it now. American ingenuity to the rescue. We have developed a solution addressing our nation's wireless needs, keeping our economy strong at home and competitive abroad. It's a solution developed in America tested by hundreds of engineers and approved by regulators from both Democrat and Republican administrations. It will bring competition and better coverage to millions of Americans right now when we need it most. It's the first 4G wireless broadband network integrated with satellite coverage, creating tens of thousands of new jobs, opening up competition, and providing high quality access and affordability for Americans no matter where they live. Don't let those opposed to competition derail the 21st century communications network all Americans deserve. Join us today by visiting wirelessforamerica.org. Well, uh, it's, it's pretty clear, as you can see. Uh, there's, uh, th there's a big problem going on right now in the country. In 24 months, there's... Uh, we may we may encounter some, well, we may encounter some serious problems in the in the um, in the in the wireless America in Canada and sorry in the United States. Um, we, um, I think the video it's self-explanatory. Um, now, why is it um, why it's not something that that's that's already in in operation? Well, again, also like what the video said, there is a. Um, Competition, competition derails the advancement of technology, and in reality, who would benefit? Uh, that would that would who who which would benefit the uh, the uh, average American? So um, now, naturally, um, we have here another site here that talks about the issue. Okay, Th this is this is uh, this is how this thing started. Uh, it's, it's been uh, it's been almost 
uh, two or three years that this new technology, this new spectrum has been delayed due to some, um, some political squabbles which we are used to in the United States. Uh, that's been derailing the uh, the progress of that spectrum, which uh, this which is the spectrum uh, I can't really recall the exact number it is, but it's the 40 megahertz of the 1.6 gigahertz uh, band. So hopefully this could help you. Um, anyways, so <coughs> the reality here, this. Uh, this uh, this new s this spectrum is is working it's on but right now it's doing nothing because it's been delayed due to some uh, political uh, partisanship and uh, which has um, which has which again the general public is paying the price okay so here uh, I have a video here from the ex uh, former FCC chief engineer which uh, I really don't want to I don't I really don't want to to make any accusation because this is not what I'm here for. I'm not a politician. God knows I will never want to be. But um, I, I just I will let some people who are right in the trenches explain to you what's been happening at Capitol Hill. <laughs> I mean, if I were teaching a, a college engineering laboratory course and this was submitted as a project, I'd give it an F minus. And uh, but at the end of the day, this could be done in a month or two. And it, but it needs to be done in a scientifically valid uh, uh, manner. The test initial test parameters were chosen for failure. And just to repeat for a moment, 32 times the power on the ground, an increase of the power on the ground than Light Square said it was going to use. And an absolutely arbitrary interference figure that has no effect on performance. Then you let the manufacturers select the receivers that are going to be test, tested. You never verify the efficacy of the receivers. By that I mean, uh, did they pick specific receivers that they would never sell? And, when, and I'm not even talking about the obsolete receivers. And it was a classic example of the college student in a laboratory drawing the curve in before he made the measurements. I truly can't explain it, and I can't speculate, but let me give you a past history. When I was the chief engineer at the FCC, uh, we were introducing ultra-wideband. The uh, GPS community did exactly exactly what's going on here. They were uh, misrepresented everything. I was accused in the press of causing airplanes to crash and on and on. There was one fundamental difference. And the fundamental difference was that the government was using ultra-wideband. And they had an interest in getting ultra-wideband done because they were using it for ground-penetrating radar, uh, surreptitious communications, a lot of other stuff. So we reached a compromise. In fact, in spite of the compromise we reached in terms of the government using this stuff, we came up with a standard that, in my judgment, inhibited future innovation. And that was when I was chief engineer. There's a religion in the GPS community it is you don't do anything next to me. Okay, well, this was uh, Ed Thomas, he's the former FCC chief engineer, giving you his take on the, 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 the scandal uh, involving Light Squared and the, um, and the uh, again, I um, keep on forgetting, the 40 megahertz of 1.6 gigahertz L band of the radio spectrum situation. Um, clearly, uh, there is some injustice in the eyes of many that was that was uh, inflicted on this on this company to uh, enable 
uh, the, the combination of GPS and the 4G wireless network in order to, co to give better service and more options to the general public. Okay, here again, there's some more people here who felt that uh, this was, um, uh, it was uh, um, unjustifiable. You got Congressman Allen Nunnally from Mississippi. La Square has proven that there is that there are practical, affordable solutions to interfer interference issues that have been presented in the past. Now, as the GPS industry scrambles to keep La Square out of its own license spectrum, <laughs> it's a huge disappointment that the FCC appears to be siding with GPS and ignoring the fact that La Square has invested billions of dollars and done everything asked of them up to this point to resolve interference with GPS devices. Okay, and well, there's 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 more here. There is uh, Congressman John Conyers from Michigan. I write to express concern about delays in the approval process involving Light Squared proposed 4G LTE wireless broadband network. I strongly urge the Commission to move with urgency to fully test potential solutions. To the light square GPS interference issue employing transparent fact-based methodologies, common sense standards, and independent testing facilities. We urgently need to devote additional um, spectrum to wireless broadband as called for under President Obama National Broadband Plan. We can do we can even go click on, on this link there for more. But it's also, also Senator Kerry who's who's uh, was uh, who wrote the letter? There's about there's hundreds, hundreds of politi political um, figures who have wrote and expressed concern for the um, the, the the delays that Let Squared or the injustice that they felt that Let Squared has been um, has been put through. Um, and naturally, at the end of the day, uh, who's who who's losing is the public. Okay, the public's losing. Now, um, who's who's the who's the benefactors of this situation? Well, it, it <laughs> I hate to mention names, but I have no choice. I'm just I'm just telling you what's written here, so it's not my invention here. AT and T and Verizon figure prominently among the top donors to the three lawmakers who are demanding documents from the FCC. Reps Fred Upton. From uh, Michigan, Greg Walden from Oregon, and Cliff Stearns from Florida. Light Squared has claimed that both companies oppose its quest to offer a nationwide 4G network using spectrum close to the band that powers GPS devices, which would have posed a competitive challenge to the telecom giants. All three lawmakers sit on the powerful House Energy and Commercial Committee, where Upton is the chairman. Okay, so basically, House and Energy and Commerce Committee is, is probably one of the most powerful committee in uh, at Capitol Hill. And uh, Upton is the chairman, and uh, these uh, these three individuals are very very important uh, reps on these uh, on this on this committee. Well, here uh, it happens that AT AT&T and Verizon are very big contributor to these lawmakers' campaigns. So, uh, I will let you figure it out. It's not up to me to, to make any assessment on this one. So now, uh, lately, as of late, things have changed. Here's an article that came out uh, uh, that, that came out not too long ago. Lawmakers on Friday pressed FCC official on, on Fierce Wireless. I'm sure you know Fierce Wireless. It's a very well-respected. Um, site. Lawmakers on Friday pressed UC FCC official on why the agency had squashed Light Squared plans to launch a wholesale LTE network so quickly. A stark reversal from earlier concern that the agency has been too cozy with the company. The lawmakers, mainly Republicans on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, subcommittee on oversight, grilled the FCC official over the fact that Light Squared 40 MHz of 1.6 GHz L band spectrum is now essentially lying on news, while the FCC urges broadcaster to give up spectrum for mobile broadband, the subcommittee chairman Rep Cliff Stearns 
Florida said that was not sound spectrum policy. It's Cliff Stearns now who says that. Complete reversal, eh? Funny. The tone is markedly different from the one FCC has received during the past year regarding Light Squared, with congressional Republicans accusing the FCC of crony capitalism and pushing Light Squared Network because of the company's connection to the White House. There we go. Charges the FCC has always denied. Now it seems lawmakers are taking the FCC to task for shutting down Light Squared Network. We must not permit regulatory uncertainty at the FCC to deter companies from investment that will bring more competition to the industry and more innovation from, for consumers, Stern said. We must not allow 40 megahertz of spectrum to sit a follow while at the same time seek to relocate broadcaster and federal users off their spectrum holdings to free up more space for wireless use. And we must not let poor receiver standards result in more interference issues down the road. Here we go. Appearing before the committee was Julius Knapp, chief of the FCC Office of Engineering and Technology, and Mindo de la Torre, who heads the FCC's International Bureau. In January 2011, the FCC gave Light Squared a conditional waiver to launch terrestrial service on its spectrum, contingent on Light Squared resolving GPS interference concerns. In February, in February, the FCC revoked the waiver and essentially shut down Light Squared network plan after tests concluded there was no practical way to mitigate the GPS interference concerns. A conclusion that Light Squared disputed, Light Squared has since filed for bankruptcy protection. Great. Rep. Diana Deghete, Deghete or Deghete, I'm not sure, from Democrat from Colorado, defended the FCC according to a broadcasting and cable report, arguing it had been put in a no-win situation. She said the FCC had taken steps to address the G GPS interference concerns after they had been raised late in the regulatory process. Okay. Well, you know, you, you guys could go on and reading this. It's a very interesting article. Okay, there's a lot of information there. And then you are free to draw your own conclusion uh, regarding this, uh, this issue. Uh, here, what are concerns here? Well, s since after this article, now the FCC has created this site. That's what you see here, wirelessforamerica.org. You know, so now the, the, the tune is changing. Now, so now they're considering letting the technology, the mobile network LTV with satellite, become a reality, which will save a lot of money to a lot of people. Basically, you'll be paying 20% uh, of what you're paying now on your bill. So, our main concern here is to how to approach our customers, what to tell our customers. That th this is this is what is important to us. How how do we keep our our our, our um, how do we inform our customers of this? We need to be straightforward with our with our with our with our with our with the, with the consumers out there, explain to them the, the situation and the opportunity that there is out there how they could save and. Uh, Basically, talking with your with your c c consumers should be like a, a, a two phrase should sell your service to them. Okay, one. You 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 should be paying only twenty percent of what you're paying right now in your wireless bill. Number two. This new uh, technology combining satellite and the 4G network will give you a larger, a broader coverage all across the United States. And this is the future. And this needs to be done now because in 24 months, serious problem will happen. So this, this is your elevator, which I call the elevator 
pitch when you're talking with your customer. This is what you need to tell your customer. Okay? If you're able to do that, then it's clear in the customer's mind. Then the customer will see you as someone who will bring him the right information to help him, help her, save money, be more productive, okay, and always be on the cutting edge. Because this is what it's all about. It's to, to uh, the ability to save customers money and giving customers the ability to 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 be to be to be more productive in order to increase their profits. Again, this 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 is your nail, and you got the hammer. Okay, keep on hitting the nail. Very simple. Again, you should be paying twenty percent of what you're paying right now. And in twenty four months, if something is not done. Chances are this well, this wireless network may collapse. Something wrong will happen. You know, I, I try to reserve myself of saying any big statement because um, uh, I, I don't want to pass for for, for 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 someone who sees things through dark. But clearly, something is wrong here. Uh, this technology, this spectrum, should have been in. Should should have been in 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 an operation or it should it should have be it should have been uh made available to the public already. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully um with uh the with, with the new with the new um um, um initiatives that the FCC is taking on right now, like you see here. You see, the FCC is asking for your comments by December 70 on a proposal made by Light Square to create a new nationwide mobile broadband network that will benefit everyone. Uh, I think these are pretty good steps. And it's our job to let people know about that, to know about that site. Let them know how we could save them money upon, until this uh, spectrum is made available to the public. Okay? So there's many ways the customer can save money. You can save them money on cloud solutions. You can save them money on better wireless and or telecommunication plans. Yes, it's AT&T, Verizon. We have no choice. They have to use AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, all these carriers there is right now. But what we can do for the for the for 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 the, for the consumer is save them money. We can show them how we 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 do our telecom management. How we will save them a minimum of 15% per year on their telecommunication. We can show them stuff like that. We can show them different options for wireless. We can show them different solutions for cloud technology. We can show them through, through, through cloud technology. They can increase their, their productivity by 40 to 45%. We can show them also that we can save them 15%, 15 which in, in return will increase their profit. Minimize the expenses. So that, that's what we can do for for our customers now. And once this spectrum is made available to the public, well then by that time we will present that that service to them as well. We will present that solution to them as well. Okay. Remember, your elevator pitch is very important. No need to go and then talk and talk and talk and talk talk for nothing because nobody has the time for that. People want what you, what's in it for me. You have to be able to tell me something that's attractive to me. So if you're talking to me, tell me what, what it's all about. And to sell something in, to, in one phrase, you could sell something to someone. You don't have to, to read a book to them. Very simple. You should be paying 20% of what you're paying right now. And in 24 months, something wrong may happen to the, to the mobile network in the United States. Simple as that, because it's oversaturated. And there is poor penetration. So one way or the other, this network needs to be rebuilt, because there is not enough, uh, there is weak penetration, and the network is oversaturated at the same time. So it, it, has, it has to be redesigned. It's not towers that's going to make a difference. Towers are limited in space and how, where you can install towers. 
it has to they has to have it has to be something that comes from the sky and this is why satellite is such an important aspect of the mobile networks and between you and i we all know that satellite this is where it's gonna go everything's gonna go through satellite one way or the other it has to be connected there has there has to be uh, a, a connection between satellite and radio signal together in order to give the best coverage in telecommunication to the general public worldwide especially in big countries who have big lands like the united states and canada oh canada oh my god this is this this is even worse over there okay there has to be a a a a definite uh connection between satellite and radio signal to in, to increase coverage okay well like i said um i hope you enjoy this presentation this is how to basically sell te telecommunication telecommunication is a very it's a fun business it's a fun um it's a fun field people just need to learn to learn about it and things that need things need to be explained in a very simplistic manner and you'll see telecommunication can be um, a delight, can be a great pleasure because you can do a lot of good for a lot of people all over the world through telecommunication. Telecommunication today, telecommunication tomorrow. Telecom telecommunication is everything. Telecom for change, telecom exchange. Hawk speaking. Thank you. Bye.